This is a video on how to replace your stock cam bearing with a ball bearing in your Yamaha XT225. I got started on this because I had a cam bearing seized from using the wrong oil filter. So I would say the first step is to get your bike looking like this. I just took off the side panels, the seat and the tank and the air scoops and I also removed the horn that was right here. And what you want to do, you're going to have the head open, so you want to make sure no dust falls in there. And since this is a dual sport bike, it could be really dusty. So I'm just going to get the dust off of all these parts, especially the ones that are above the cylinder head up here. There's a weed on here. Just clean it up. I'm going to blow it off with some air too. Go ahead and remove your access caps for your crankshaft bolt and TDC mark cover. And then your timing chain cover. TDC mark will show in here. The engine in this bike turns the same direction as the wheel. Still got a spark plug in it, so it's a little bit slow, some resistance. It's about there. I'm checking through the hole here to see top dead center. And it's, it's pretty close. There it is. The reason why you wanted that top dead center is because we're going to be pulling the whole camshaft out and I want the cam lobes to be down so they don't catch on the lifters. Go ahead and remove your valve covers using a five millimeter Allen wrench. The reason you want to take these covers off is because when you're pulling the cam out, you're going to have to push down on both rocker arms in order to get the lifters off the, off the camshaft so it will come all the way out. So now what I'm going to do is remove this 17 millimeter bolt here from the center of the cam. And I'm lucky I have air tools because if you don't have an impact wrench, you're going to have to figure out how to hold that sprocket. Keep it from turning. But if you have an impact wrench, no problem. Comes right off. So now the next step is I need to relieve tension off the timing chain. So I'm going to open up this ten tensioner here. Timing chain tensioner. First I'm going to use a 10 millimeter wrench to take off the, I think it's just a dust cover nut. To retract the spring in here, all you need to do is take a small slotted screwdriver and twist it. Turn the screw in there. I'm screwing it inward, the screwdriver, but that relieves pressure off the chain but if you release the screwdriver it's going to go right back and put pressure on the chain again tension on the chain so i'm going to screw it out then i'm going to put a clamp on here so it can't unscrew i'm not sure if this is going to work but i'm going to try it i think it's going to work yeah no tension so i just can't bump that all right now i can take this sprocket off carefully um Set the sprocket aside. I'm going to put a zip tie around the chain for the reason that if I drop it down in the hole, I can retrieve it with a zip tie tail here. All right, there's a closer look. You may want to remove this pin here. Be real careful not to drop it in this motor. In my case, the pin's pretty sticky. It's staying in there, so I'm not too worried about it falling out. So next, I need to remove this collar retainer it has two 10 millimeter bolts, but they, it has um, a retainer here that's bent up to keep the bolts from backing off. So I need to bend those down. So I'm just going to use a kind of a chisel pointed punch here to get a hammer to bend these down. 
get away from the nut. That's enough. Impact driver to remove both bolts. Being very careful not to drop them in the motor, of course. Now there's two pieces here this, that's held on here. You want to make sure neither of them go down in the motor. Okay. And this is the it's a journal bearing in the Yamaha parts fish. It calls it a collar, but this is what's going to be replaced with the, it's called a 6005 bearing. So I got this 6005 and I don't know what the rest of the numbers mean. I'm sure they mean something, but SKF brand bearing that just happens to be the exact same size, the ID and OD and width as this collar here. I'm also going to remove both seals because I don't think this rubber is up to the temperature duties of going into a cylinder head. So I'm going to set that aside. What I want to do now is pull the cam out. Okay, to help me pull this cam out, I went and found a metric 10 millimeter bolt and I checked the against the bolt that came out of here that the diameter is right and the thread pitch is the same. And the length is about right. He's beefed up with some washers here. And just a part from puller that I had. I'm going to put it across here. And I'm going to screw it into the cam to slowly draw it out. We'll see how that works. See if I can see that collar coming out. Oh yeah, I felt it give. I can see it moving. So the collar's coming out. So now I will press down on both rocker arms. Take them off the camshaft and slowly pulling the collar out and the camshaft with it. pressure on the rocker arms and the camshaft is out. So what I think the flaw in the design of this head is, is that the oil supply to the head comes to this journal bearing in the camshaft and then the oil flows through the camshaft through the drilled cam lobes where all the oil, there's nothing covering this lobe most of the time. So all the oil pressure is just gone because the oil can just freely flow out of here. And then the oil makes its way through the camshaft to this journal bearing. So essentially this journal bearing has no oil pressure going to it, just kind of a dribble of oil. No wonder why it is the first one to seize when the head is starved of oil. So this is why I'm replacing mine with a ball bearing anyway. And this one doesn't even have a problem with oiling the head. I'm gonna put the cam right back in. So I'm putting my hand around the other side of the bike, pushing down on both lifters, and then the cam goes right into place. Pin goes approximately in the up position. Removing these seals is pretty easy. You just get a pick or something sharp and... Let's see if she's gonna go in easy. <laughs> Yep, look at that. Kind of a slip fit there. If the surface of the head or the camshaft is buggered up a little bit, say if it's seized in there, you might need to sand it with a little bit of sandpaper and then of course be careful not to get the grid in the engine, clean it out good. And then you may have to tap it in. If you do have to tap it in, if it's a, you may want to tap it on the camshaft first. If that's the case, only tap on the inner race. And then when, if you have to tap it into the head only tap on the outer race using a socket or something like that of the right diameter. You don't want to put any lateral force on those balls. So now once that's in, we need to use this retainer to hold it in. However, the retainer was designed for that collar, so I'm going to modify it by cutting off this little piece here with a Dremel tool.
Then reinstall the locking tab holder plus the 10 millimeter bolts. I like to use Loctite on. Bend up the tabs. Line up top dead center again. And cut off the zip tie and put the chain on your sprocket. And it might take a few tries, but get the top sprocket aligned vertically also. And I like to use Loctite on the 17 millimeter bolt. And I just tighten it down with an impact very gently. Now you can release the screw on the timing chain tensioner and it will apply tension to the chain. Now I like to rotate the engine at least twice just to make sure it's still in time. This is how the mark should look and you can put in the dust cover bolt on the timing chain tensioner. Install the timing chain cover. Breather hose. And the port covers. And then you can reassemble the bike. You do need to readjust your valves after doing this.